Hello and welcome to my channel. What we're going to go through here is mostly I'm going to go over the storage, but in, in essence we're going to see the majority of my knife collection. So I know there's going to be a lot of knives in here and, you know, potential for talking. But basically, um, I just wanted to say uh, how much this has helped organize me from going from something like this. You know, this was my knife storage. <laughs> to something like this. So. <clears throat> over here, you know, we got uh, various knives stuck in here. More like traditionals. <clears throat> Sunfishes and canoes. Descant out of there. Oh. <clears throat> Um, copperheads, and then s the beginning of uh, some yellow knives, <laughs> and of course the YKM Club hides out here. They have their own section. They actually wanted their own case, but I gave them a little sign. I said, "Here, here, you know, y'all are special." But you see, they're already starting to take over. All right, so that's one. Let me pause this. I'm banging things. All right, and here's another case, just like the other case, but with different knives. Oh, back over here. Um, I need to pull this guy out because we're gonna do a little UV test on him. <laughs> but yeah, we got other knives in here. See, they'll take all different kinds of sizes of knives and stuff. And shapes and sizes. <clears throat> then we got the flippers. The RKOs and Cold Steel. <clears throat> CJRB. Uh, this was my first Civivi flipper. And it was the first one. I think they call this the Shard. It was the first one that was got me like, wow, this thing feels good. There's a finger twirl that I can use. There's jimping back here. The only thing I didn't like was this kind of carbon fly fiber, um, like decal, you know? I mean, it's sticking up and everything. You could have at least recessed it in there or made it all carbon fiber or not, you know, either one. But, yeah, it's the only thing I didn't like about it. Uh, but other than that, it's a great knife. Got me into flipper knives, which is what I first started you know pursuing and everything was i didn't i wasn't into traditional knives i was into flippers and um this is what stopped me from chasing flippers the only problem is this one has a weak detent see that i can fail it easily i can make it go but i mean Usually, Civivi doesn't have a weak detent, which surprised me. But when I took it apart and looked in the detent ball track, there's a dent in there like a Rockwell hardness test somebody did or something, right in the track. And I tried to smooth it out a little bit, but I don't want to screw it up, you know, because it is an important area, and I didn't want to go and make it worse. So I did, you know, try to follow the track with a hard um, tip of a file, and go back and forth and and oil it a lot but it, that's what I always i like the knife but i i was upset about the detent and i tried everything everybody suggested try this try that try tightening the bar try doing this trying to and none of it worked so when this other version came out in s35 vn and i got it that's perfect detent i don't there's no problem with it it's not this one hasn't been oiled or anything. I mean, I can't fail it. Every time. So, I'm happy with it. I really didn't need the S35 VN, but you know, what the hell. Here's Reserve reserving himself for something. It's not in a tube or anything. Alright. Let me get some bigger knives over here. Some Barlow's. Big Daddy Barlow and uh, Rat Dylan Mallory stuff Praxis 
Uh, this looks like a 940, but it's actually uh, Gonzo. Gonzo's uh, version. But it has a little... This is a Firebird. This is Firebird. I don't remember his number. I'll have to look at it. FB765 and 440C, which is a good steal. I like it. I don't have any complaints with 440C and an inexpensive knife. All right. And the last layer. Older stuff and uh, newer stuff mixed in. The VG10 one. This is what I used to call the Rhino. This is a good little utility. Like it. You don't like Tantos or whatever, but man, if you ever need to work, scrape something off, you can use just this edge for that. And you still have this for cutting stuff. And it can do some pokey stab if you want to. You just have to change your angle. But it's more of a utility, little stubby, little work knife. Cool little knife. So there, that's, that's those. And that's in those, in two containers right there. So see, you can... You can get an idea. I, I should be able to count them, count them up later. Right. Get these guys all the way around. Then we have the knife roll. This is the big knife roll. I think it was about fifteen dollars at Smokies at one time, but then they stopped having it, and then they—I don't know if they still have it, but. That's where I originally got it a while back. Knife roll's good, but you got to have a long area to roll it out in. We're going to have to go wide angle on this. Well, now we'll just roll them past. These are the Moon Glow series. I guess they could be classified as yellow if we get into the Yellow Knives Matter Club. Uh, some hawk bills, different hawk bills. This is one of those multi-bladed rough riders. I wonder if this guy is. Oh, he's a marbles. He's a marbles. This one, like I said, was the reason why I, it took me a while before I really got into sunfish because um, this baby sunfish here. Uh, yeah, it's nice and everything. But, I mean, when you pull it out... It's okay, but what got me was me. The secondary blade on this guy. This is a number 10 nail pull on this one. See? You can't, you can't, you have to pull this blade up to get to that one. And then you've got a stubby little dinky blade. It only really goes about that far. And I thought, man, I don't know what the hype is about sunfish. I mean, it's got nice abalone and everything in it. Um,. But I don't like them. And it was because I had a baby sunfish. So later on when Knife Detector started doing his series about sunfish, that's when I went, wow, I need to get into those. And then I like sunfish. All right. So this is the dog bone jack with the little whistle here attached to it. It's got the little dog bone. Burl wood, lockback, tortoise shells. Uh, this is a tailgate trapper. We'll see a lot of Rough Riders in here. Higo Konami, or Higo Nogami, or whatever you call it. Higo Nogami, by uh, Starry Lock, sent me this one. in Hitachi Blue Paper Steel. Get back in there. Good thing is it keeps your stuff organized. Bad thing is you don't see it. You know when it's when it's hard to get, and you've got to unroll it and you've got to get it. That's my uh, complaint about knife rolls is when they're in there, it's out of sight, out of mind. So I have a separate box where I keep a bunch of knives right near me. So this is not like I said my complete um, knife collection or anything. It's just uh, most of them. Because they, they don't show all of them. I don't, I don't even know where all of them are. There's some that are hiding. Um, melon testers. Congresses. This was my dad's 
Um, this is my dad's knife. This is what he carried or had on him. A little frost. I remember what they call this. He had a special name for this multicolored wood. Frost wood, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's, let's zoom in see if we can see what the date is on this. Nope, I can't see crap. Frost cutlery. There's something underneath it. Uh, surgical steel. So see, Dad wasn't into super steels and everything. He was more of appearance. He probably bought it because he liked the looks of it, and it was the size that he wanted. He didn't want a big knife or something. He wanted a pocket knife. Which is, you can see, it's about the size of a peanut. This peanut, this is a, oh, I forgot about him. He can go in my Barlow section. I have a little Barlow section that I'm going to put up. Uh, different Rough Riders, Trappers. Um, this is one of those, you know, flip out ones I did a thing on. Where some people had a problem with this lock system. Not not just like this going all the way over. This is alright because it it's not going to hurt it. It's designed it to hold it right there. But this part, you see how the hinge is already sticking out a little bit? It has, mine's solid. has a good lock up. But I saw one where there's like a little detent where the guy's blade is sticking up like this on it. So you take your chances on some of these. Um, this looks like the identical knife, but instead it's just a trapper. In the Outdoorsman series. See, I was trying to put them all together, all the little acorns together. Whoa! See, and that happens too. You didn't see it, but the end fl flips over. I mean, it, it keeps them secure. It keeps them stored and everything, but uh, it's a pain in the butt to use, especially on the big ones. Now, the small ones that'll fit on a table or a chair or something else. And this is um, pleather. This is vinyl, simulated leather. Um, it has the advantage of you don't have to worry about oil or anything else like that. It's somewhat waterproof, but it's not real leather. All right, let me pause this. All right, last but not least, this is a little... This is good for, like, uh, you're collecting a series of knives or a group of knives, you know. I've already outgrown this one, but um, it's doctor's knives. So it holds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It holds twelve knives. Now, if you were going after all cinnamon, you know, whatever, you could put them all in, you know, you could all put a whole series in there. And it, it's nice, it's back. Um, it's easy to, you know, it's just got a couple little snaps. There's no handles or anything. It's fairly simple. It stores up, you know, flat or upright fairly easily. So if you combine those knives with... Um, the tackle box that I showed the last time and the fishing lure type one. All we have left is another box. Let me go get it. So, yeah, I'm retired. So, I have I have a chair that sits next to me. And in these chairs, I keep these two, you know, on a, on a table right next to me. I have this. And I just keep, like, my most current knives and knives I like to mess around with. Um... I have a sheath for this too. I just don't leave it in this box. This is just a reach and a grab. I was carrying this brother knife. Pretty cool. It's the 15. I really love brother knives, man. They're they're great. Um, this one here, I'm still I carry with me all the time. Is this F005? Sorry, this is bouncing around. We're in an alternate table this is the dinner table in d2 but man this thing is wicked on <clears throat> cutting stuff it's got that scanty grime d2 so you're not going to get edge roll <clears throat> this guy is great i love this i love this knife all these right here you know i'm just always messing around with of course recent purchase like i said and then uh this one's another great one, the Half Hawk. 
So I'm sort of organized. I just took a cardboard box, reinforced it with strapping tape, you know. And then on the kind of pulse oximeter, a UV light. See, now what the UV light is good for is uh, you can see things. Now, I saw this before. See how it kind of fluoresces? I saw it before, but it didn't. It didn't stay long, so I just, I never, I never used a UV light on it until after um, Tobias put that up about it. But I looked at it, I was like, wow, I looked at it in different light, you know, inside and outside. But I never looked to see if it glowed. And after Tobias said that, man, you can see, you get a little phosphorescent, you see how it's glowing? But it goes away quick. Well, that's different. It, it is phosphorescent. I mean, yeah, it's, there's different fluorescent, like a fluorescent tube. It doesn't glow unless there's power applied to it, you know. It's a neon tube. It doesn't glow unless there's power applied to it. And then the gases, you know, glow. In this case, it's a mineral. It's probably some kind of zinc or something like that in there that uh, the old school glow-in-the-dark stuff didn't last very long, even if you charged it real well. See how it does that? A normal, a mineral would not have that residual fade like that. So that's called phosphorescence. And it has something in there. So the, what I was saying is, I can see how uh, Tobias was saying that Smoky um, Mountain Knife Work didn't want to advertise it as one of those because I have other knives that will glow in the dark for a long, long time. I don't know where I've got this hidden. I've got it hidden somewhere. It's kind of like this guy. This guy, you know, doesn't look like he's phosphorescent or anything or fluorescent. But if you hit it and it's dark enough, there's little sparkles in there, like a little glitter. Um, can't see it. Maybe it'll focus. Focus on that. Now you can't really see it in the light, but it, there's glitter in there, glow-in-the-dark glitter. So yeah, this is cool, man. I want to advertise. I would have said, um, I wouldn't have said anything about it being phosphorescent or or glowing or anything like that. I would have just said, for a special treat, hit it with a black light. You're not making any claims that well, this thing's gonna glow in the dark forever. Why didn't you say it glows in the dark? Well, it doesn't glow in the dark unless you shine a light on it. That's not really glowing in the dark. And this is a UV light. It's an Olight I3EOS. I3UVEOS. Now, they have a they have a, a I5, which is a double A. I think this guy is just a triple A. Yeah, he's just a triple A. And it's the original one. It came with the light. Nothing special. But it's a nice little light. You can also see cracks and scales a lot of times, too. Um, that don't normally show up, you know, especially around the pins. You hit it with a light and you're looking at it up close and you go, hey. So anyways... There you go, that's the Celestial series, I guess. And over here, you know, I just got little, small um, pen knives and stuff, you know. The toothpicks, small case. Want another toothpick, the Pipe Doctor. Uh, little Barlow. This guy, I think, is the best. Um, little tool you can carry around because it's wedged like that. It'll work as a screwdriver and a pry bar. The newer uh, ones that Rough Rider has come out with has a hole in it and everything, which is... I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it over here. Trash the place. I can't find it. It has a hole in it and everything, and it has two different ends, you know. One is tapered and all is like a chisel. Uh, but the, the, they're both very high chisel grind and sometimes you need just this like you want to lift the lid of a plastic thing or something but you don't want to use your knife and cut it uh that's why i say i like these much better as a general as as far as a nail neck goes yeah i don't know i don't know how good they are as a nail neck but you got the little uh cub little cub block back it's a little 
three and a half but the way your finger falls in there and this is tough i mean this is a thick blade no no wobble in it it's stick it's not like a it's not like a toothpick you can open up a can of soup with one of these and you're not gonna mess it up you're not gonna bend the tip of this blade it's got a little swedge on it even these are cool these are, these are tough little knives you know for their size um it's not like something like this this is more of a novelty you know i got it mainly because it had supposedly a little can opener or something with it little bottle cap lifter i haven't tested that one but it looks like it'll work and then this kind of can opener man You'd have to be pretty desperate to use this guy, it looks like. I think. I'd, I'd be in a very desperate mode. I mean, it would probably work. I don't know. I'll have to try it one day. Yeah. And then, you know, peanuts. So, if I want a small knife, I reach up here and I've got a selection, you know? Or if I need a little tool or whatever, bam, I've got a selection. Or if I've got a new knife in it and I don't want to put it up and hide it because I can't see it, you know, and I... If you out of sight, out of mind, sometimes if you, you might order another knife, forgetting that you even had it. But you know, I got my copper lock in here. Um, the latest coral snake, rough rider, workman's knife, the old timer in desert wood. This stuff feels great, man. Smooth, very smooth. I like that. And then, of course, a uh, Spyderco Sage 5, lightweight. And then clip to the outside. If you're starting off, man, and you need a knife, this is the way to go. I'm just saying. It's only like about 10 bucks. It's an F759M. Little gonzo, or now they're calling them firebirds. And then this, I always wanted a dragonfly, but this is the bird, bird robin, bird, bird. I use this guy a lot. Just a perfect size. 8CR13MOV doesn't bother me. Because really, now when you get to a smaller a knife like this you might want to upgrade your steel simply because you're using the blade a lot more you only got a certain amount of blade and you're using it a lot i mean if you carry a small knife like this you'll wind up using it a lot um because usually this is all you need and if you've got a bigger knife with you you don't have to worry about well what if i need a bigger knife well then you use your bigger knife you pull this guy out there there's your two knife situation solution right there. A small knife to do a small task and a big knife <laughs> to handle whatever. And after that, if you need something more than that, then you don't need a knife. You need something else. Either a gun or a machete or a hatchet or something. But you don't need a knife. All right, so there you go. There's my little um, whole collection, basically. It's not, like I said, we don't, we're, we're leaving out the fixed blades. I put it in one folder. Look at that. It's your sword. Eh, he takes up everybody. Wow. <laughs> it's your Halloween knife, I guess. You know, you have this one sitting out there in a little garden gnome's hand. <laughs> He's in there. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> you know, punks. Yeah, I got your trick or treat right here. All right, thank you for watching and have a nice day.